Hi, thanks for stopping by. I'm Ghost Prime. I'll take a look at Studio Series 86 Ultra Magnus. Now, Studio Series 86 Ultra Magnus is a commander class, meaning he is a kind of a high price point. And I know there's a lot of people out there that saw the in-hand picks and said he's really big for Ultra Magnus, and he kind of is. The idea is, though, it has to be a car carrier. He fits cars, deluxe size cars, in his trailer, which brings me to another point. We are ebbing closer and closer to Masterpiece, both in price and in complexity. This is a really great figure. So just remember to like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and without any further ado, let's get to the review. The Transformers will return after these messages. This October 20th through the 22nd, TFCon Orlando at Doubletree by Hilton Hotel Orlando at SeaWorld with special guests Bob Budiansky, Victor Caroli, Dan Gilvison, Gary Chalk, Richard Newman, Alex Milne, David Sobloff, and Casey Kohler. Meet mediocre YouTubers Bert the Stormtrooper, Deluxe Baldwin, Diecast Norbs, Engineer Hoist, Fire Talks, Ghost Prime, Cato's Collection, Patriot Prime, Rodimus Primal, and Treebot. If you see them, make sure and say hi. You'll most likely find them at the bar. That's TFCon Orlando in October. Be there! We now return to the Transformers. Now here is the box. So this is actually a very large box. Uh, he comes standing up in the box, which is why it's so large. It wouldn't be as big as they if they decided to keep him in alt mode. I don't know why they did that. Maybe to make it look more imposing, like you're getting $100 worth of a figure. Um, right here, it says The Transformers, the movie, Studio Series, Ultra Magnus, 86, number 21, Hasbro 8+, plus, and has a glorious picture of him in battle. On the top, we have Transformers, the movie logo with the shuttle. Same picture, depiction on the side and close up of his face on the other side. On the back, we have all the details here. And this one's actually kind of cool. Big screen inspired detail backdrop. We have him pointing here. Matrix is flying out of his chest. Uh, and then you have uh, 43 steps into the truck. And here he is right here. This is pretty cool. Works with deluxe class figures. If we get up close on that. So he could actually do what the Generation 1 did. He does come with blast effects, and there is the backdrop. On the bottom is nothing really interesting. Getting him open and out of the box, he does come with a lot of accessories. First off, let's uh, check out this backdrop here. You can open it up. It has the ship, the shuttle. You see some damage here, and it is large. Here he is in it. I'm not sure if you could fit him in a truck mode in this, but it is the length of the box. So it is probably, the, it's the largest backdrop I think we've got so far. Uh, I might be mistaken, but I do believe it is. And it's a nice backdrop. Let's get this out of the way real quick. This does take up a lot of my review space. So you do get Ultra Magnus. He does not have his ears on him. So this whole piece right here, see how that comes out? These are pretty easily lost, by the way. I couldn't even find it in the bag. It was stuck to the tape at the end of the bag. These are all in the back. Even this little piece here comes off. And I don't want to do I don't want to break anything. But these pieces come off and plug into the side of his head. He comes earless. You get his iconic rifle here, which would turn upside down, is the inner robots. There's his iconic rifle. Now this is done up uh, in uh, clear plastic which it does come with a bunch of blast effect pieces that do fit on it. So it was made for blast effects, but it's clear here and then painted over this uh, silver color, this blue pinkish silver. And this piece, I don't know, I think it might be, this looks like an actual plastic piece that like is, I don't know, it's not screwed in. I don't see screw holes, but glued in or something. Uh, he does come with another blaster. It's what he uses in the movie as well. Again, the same paintwork and this piece here. And it is done in clear, uh, with has this, this the, but the handle is not. It's interesting. Uh, you get his little missiles, which 
attach to the missile launcher. So I get this in focus. See, so they attach like that. They have a five millimeter peg on the end. Two of these. And a bunch of blast effect pieces that, when you put them together, basically the same thing we got with, I believe it was Omega Supreme at first, but I started this silver instead of a black. And you get two of these end pieces. I uh, have misplaced my other one. Oh, here it is. The two of these end pieces. And again, they are like dusted with a silver color. Um, as opposed to, I think this one is Jetfire's. You can see there is a bit of difference in color. Uh, it's minor, but it's there. So yeah, you get a lot of accessories. And his missile launchers do attach to the side. Like so. And one thing that is cool about, about these, um, let's see if I can do it with... Let's choose this one. So it is blast effect compatible. This could go inside like that. And then you could stick the missile right there as if the missile is actually firing out. You may even be able to make it longer. See if I can do that. There. That missile has some mighty thrust. That's what she said. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. Uh, the blast effects are interesting that it comes with. I didn't expect to have blast effects. Or two guns. Now, these guns can also store on his back. Is he in the back? Nice clean back, by the way. Uh, there are two slots. Slot on his butt flap and his spot right there. So you could peg that in with the slot there. And have it like that. Or any which way you want. It doesn't matter which one they go on. So he doesn't have to hold them in his hands. Really very cool. And and he just, he I mean, he looks fantastic. Getting in close on the head sculpt, his face is painted a sort of silvery color. You can see how the shine works. And the eyes are actually painted. So you look on the back of him, he is light piping. So this is his whole light piping piece here. And it's, I don't know, I can't get my light in there very well, so I can lean it down. You kind of see it there. His light piping is is excellent. Very little light to actually make his eyes glow. So it looks really good. And this head sculpt is killer. It is way better. It's definitely the best Magnus head sculpt we've got. It is really, really, really good. So moving down or moving up to the side, you see the Autobot logo show up there. Uh, this whole piece, this whole chest piece. So this piece will lift up and spring open like that. These are all Clear pieces of plastic here, translucent with the matrix. We've seen this matrix a hundred times before. I just noticed it's upside down. I did not take this out. That's how it was packaged. This whole in, in interior is painted actually two different colors. They really detailed that nice. And that holds together really well. So moving on down, not really much paint to speak of. This here top white piece is painted. And there he is on the, with the feet. Turning them around onto the back. See, this is painted here. These reds look two different colors in my camera, much more than they are in person. They are a little bit different between the plastic and the paint color, but it's not that big of a deal. Moving down the back, the back of his legs are painted blue. I think I was on the side, so you can see where that's painted blue over red plastic. So as you could tell, his fingers are articulated. Um, I guess we're starting there. So he has one finger that is on... Uh, two two hinges, right? So you get the a pin right there at the knuckle, and a pin right there in the knuckle. And you have the three fingers here that are connected under just two pins at the here knuckle and then the middle knuckle. Um, the wrist is articulated; it rotates a bit hollow in there, but that's not that bad big of a deal. His elbows are on a a ratchet. And he can bicep swivel. He could go out this far with his shoulder piece there. Move my camera up so we can see a little better. Um, and then these are heavily ratcheted. So you can hear that. And if you undo this, he has a bit of a butterfly. But you have to undo that top piece first that holds the whole assembly together. His head, as you saw, is on a 
ball joint, and he could look up really, really high. He could look down a little bit, a kind of inquisitive look, and 360. Good articulation there. He does have an articulated waist that goes 360. His uh, flaps come up about that far, so he can only get about, oh, well, he gets pretty good with his legs. Um, and then ratcheted knees. These are not ratcheted up here. I think that would be great if this was ratcheted. Up, like this is ratcheted here to forward, and his crotch flap comes up, and he goes back this far. It's a soft ratchet, but it would be nice if that was ratchet. Now, they hold up pretty well on my copy, but, you know, it is what it is, and I can see some copies being loose. His feet can only go about that much with the A-frame, A-stance. It's, it's okay. It's enough. So you get some really, 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 really sound poses. No ab crunch or anything like that, but, I, you know, I, I don't know if we could be that picky with this thing. This thing is pretty solid. And then you can attach his guns in there. And like I said, you can on the back as well. So one thing I would like to get into real quick is comparisons. And let's do a comparison with the original cartoon model right here. So you can see how close he is. He's a little more wide, but honestly, this whole piece right here is not that bad in person. It looks really, really solid, really good. Like it looks like a good stance. He actually clears his legs with his arms too, which is pretty cool. And here he is with the... I think this is Earthrise or Kingdom Ultra Max. I don't remember which one it was. But, yeah. Um, night and day difference. I mean, of course, this one does not have an inner robot where this one does. So I understand the differences there. But I, I just can't even tell you how different these are. I mean, even just looks. It's just, it's so different. And this one, and I hate using this word. I really hate using this word to define anything main, uh, mainstream, or not mainstream, but mainline. Masterpiece. This is closer to a masterpiece than it is a mainline. As you can easily see here, it is really, really, really close to the masterpiece. And here's the masterpiece. Now, the masterpiece is quite a bit bigger. A lot of design cues from this are, from this are taken for this. A lot of them. It takes a lot of the sculpting. And redoes it a little bit. You can see they use like some of the same pieces. It is similar in a lot of ways, especially where we're looking here. We're looking at the feet, the the overall sort of stance of it. Very, very, very similar. This one actually does some things better. This one has uh, better shoulders, much better articulation overall, and this one does. And if we look at it from the side, they sure as hell fix something that was a real big problem in the original which is that back. Look how clean that is in comparison to this. I mean, this whole butt flap thing, remember that whole, I mean, I don't know if you guys were around during that, and seeing the backlash that that butt flap uh, made in the community, it was insane. But even the legs are clean, as these ones are, you know, panely. Uh, yes, this one is more complicated, but in it, it, it's just, it's, I mean, it shares a lot of the engineering, I guess, or similar engineering, maybe not the same, but I mean, really, really, I mean, this is, this was, I believe, 125, 138 retail. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, this one's about a hundred dollars uh, with taxes and I think hand shipping, I don't remember, but it was, you know, $90 plus tax, right? So about a hundred bucks. And they're, so they're close in price. And this one has metal, or this one doesn't have metal. But overall, as far as engineering goes, it is leagues above this guy it's a good figure and it's where where i think it really the really shows where hasbro should be should be living at this price point so i'm not mad that above at the price point at all especially given this thing so this thing actually does another thing and if you remember in in the movie where he was going to be drawn and quartered but he just ended up being blown up he could actually come apart. So in here, you have a Combiner Wars sort of style port. Now, this will not work with Combiner Wars, so don't try it. Um, it will not work. This is hard to do. you got to press that down and slide these out. So he can explode into pieces. Um, now, I don't know why you'd really want to do that. Um, it's there if you really want to you know, have that play feature uh, where he explodes into these pieces. Man, this is hard to get back in. There we go. He does that on his arms as well. See if we can find where it's at. 
it is it's in there i think you might have to open up the whole arm to take it apart yeah right here so lift that up move that out and then push this forward like that then you go ahead and put that back if you want to have just his arm hanging out so it's a thing you could do if you want to do it um you know, it's it's a play feature and cool, cool. Why not? Well, you know, I mean, add features, features and gimmicks are cool. I miss features and gimmicks, and it stays in there pretty well. It's not like the Combiner Wars ones where they just like to slide out and it's hidden there in the arm. Very, very, very cool. All right, now for transformation, I'm going to attempt to do this on camera. I have not done this on camera. I have not transformed them very much. Just got them yesterday, so bear with me. Uh, first thing we want to do is go ahead and un. Peg these from the side, which have these pieces accordioned in and straighten out his elbows. Just kind of unpeg it all. And then these can come out like so. All the way. Uh, these pieces of his chest. And then we could go ahead and move that whole chest piece up. This piece with the two little white dots comes up and moves like this. So then we can move the belt piece up and around. So I haven't been able to do this without taking the cab off yet. So I'm going to attempt to, but if it comes off, it comes off. Not a big deal to separate it. But you can get up to it just fell off. So we'll do, go ahead and do that. Um, it's okay because it just snaps on right there. So it snaps on just like that. So let's go ahead and these joints are just really tight. I think over time I'll be able to do it easier without without really messing it up. So you know, connected it, disconnecting everything. Then move those out a little bit. Okay, this goes like that. The paddles at the side come up around. You have the Windows on the bottom that come up and fold, make the front of the truck. Then move these down a little bit, see how they all connect. Move that up like that. And then this hole is the top of the car. So, and this is the top of the truck. There we go. I was snapping, they're too tight. Let's go ahead and move these pieces in and out of the way. This flap goes down over the face, which I don't like, which I'll get to in a minute. But and take the wheels here, push those through, and they snap there. Cab section comes up, and there's like a little tab on the side. And this piece has really tight joints, so the top joints are tighter than these other ones. And it doesn't do like a perfect right angle, so you just kind of got to put it in there. And then there's tabs, tabs here, 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 lots there, and there on either side. Go ahead and just... Have all that together. The tabs in, mine tabs in real tightly on that. Then you want to take the wheels out. So, and the head, so this little grooves, move that kind of back like that. And there's little grooves, like see these little, actually you can see these little points right there, because little grooves in the sides of the face. And that just kind of goes like that. The head goes like that, and you have the cab. And it rolls really nice. Let's finish the trailer. So, of course, we're here. We lay this down. The legs pieces here come up with mighty ratchets. There we go. And now what we're going to want to do is the knees are actually double hinged. So we're going to pull these back. Like that. See how, see the differences here. All right, so pull that back and it snaps. Then like that. Then there is a slot and a peg. Peg that in together. Wait, make that so like that. Now what we're going to do here with these wheels are, pull them out and kind of put them down so they roll. So see how it's got a gap there? See the other side? So there's this little hinge out, 
pull it down and it snaps back in and actually holds pretty well. So there's, there's that. So now we have this much and I'm going to take these flaps, move them up and around. And there is a tab right or tab right there and a slot right there and they'll slot in. And that actually holds us all whole piece together. You go ahead and take, well, oh, take this piece, untab it. That's the first time that's happened, but it's only frictions on there, so it's not a big deal. Uh, how's that go? There we go. I'll go ahead and just slot that back on. There. So this piece, up like that. This around. Same thing. This side. Okay, let's we'll leave those for that, that for a minute. Now, I've had trouble with these pieces. So, go like this, and what they do is they snap in. As you can see, there's a little bit of stress marks right there. That is one thing that I don't like about it. There is stress marks on it already. So, these go up like this and snap in. Then it will give you a little stress mark, at least on mine it did. Keep those straight. Yeah, see, there we go. Stress mark. That is incredibly difficult to get out when I transform this back. So then you go ahead and close these pieces. There's a tab, slots right there. I'll slot that in on both sides. Make sure the waist isn't moved. And we're getting there. So arms kind of do the same thing that the masterpiece does. So it swings out from here. It just frictions into this joint. This is something kind of clever. So these pieces right here on the top are tabs and slots, and they go like that and hold that in well. It does hold it into place, right? And you take his piece here, open that piece, slide that around over the hand. I got that and make it a fist. Like that, then close it up by tabbing it. Go ahead and move that all the way around. Close those back. Take this piece here where the missiles, the hole of the missile slide in. Snap that around like that. See it again from the other side. Turn that up. Connect those pieces. Take the arm. Swing that down. Just move the finger in. Up and around. Close it up. Take the whole arm all the way. This little piece on the side, which is painted, by the way, is molded in white. And then we tab, right? So you tab, 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 slot, slot, tab, slot. Like that. They're even on the back. There is a tab and a slot. So these all go together. One more thing with this is these two, there'll be two holes here. This is also a lot like the masterpiece. You just kind of fill in that gap with a little panel. So they have the little panel. Make sure it's all nice and straight. And then what well, they're still going here, right? So you have these little pieces here on the side. Now these go like this and they need to slide. So open that. And slide. This is one of the things the instructions, which I realized I forgot to show you, it does come with instructions, is not very clear on. So you go like that, and that holds together. Except for I put my finger in, in there. But that holds together really well. And then for the cab, you go ahead and just put that back on, snap it together. Like that. Oh, make sure the, the butt flap is there so it does snap in place. And it rolls excellent. It, it rolls very, very nice. Now, as for storage, gun storage, they kind of can just kind of pop in right there. Honestly, that doesn't work super well for me. Um, it's all right. I mean, there's a, it's, this is the five millimeter port right there on what would be the elbow. And you can just put that like that. It works all right. I mean, it's there. Uh, this is definitely a very slavelessly G1. Uh, figure so these being off does not bother me in the slightest 
So actually one little thing I want to do real quick is kind of lift up towards the camera so we get to see some of the detailing on him. Now it's not very apparent in this video, but this is a little discolored on mine and these pieces right here. Um, and this light is actually okay uh, in my front light. I think it might just be the plastic. Uh, I think the jury's out on that, but I like the detail. I like how it has the, the painted bumper. It's always weird to see red. Something in my head just thought it was silver on the show too, like the toy. But silver painted here. Uh, this is all just white plastic. He does have the rims that are painted. You see on the side of the Autobot logo show up there. All the detail going all the way through the back. It'd be nice if these were white. But big the feet hanging off the back. Kind of like the masterpiece. But it, it holds together pretty solid. And, and I dig this. I did this a lot. And here he is in truck mode with the Kingdom version. Uh, as you can see, he is much larger. The truck, the cab itself, though, is bigger. But get an idea there of just how these two look. Oop, hit the camera. But I mean, this one is just not a car carrier. It just, and it's, and it kind of really phoned it in with this one. But this is how Ultra Magnus should look. I get an idea. The color is much different as well. I mean, there we go. Stay up there. Much, much different. This one also has the added benefit of, like the Generation 1, it has a ramp where you can fit cars inside. For example, here is Red Sunstreaker. And he will fit in there. In addition to that, unpeg these, this can move down as a ramp. So you could put on top full on Diaclone with a jet on top, sort of. It kind of doesn't really hang on there super well. There we go. All right, and I do got a lot to say about this guy in my final thoughts, so stay tuned. So this thing is chock full of goodness. It is a fantastic robot. His transformation is super, super fun to do. It's not difficult, it's intuitive, and it works. His posability is good. I love the fact that there's no big backpack and giant butt flap like in the Masterpiece. And speaking of Masterpiece, I think Masterpiece was around $130, $145, something around there. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, it's been some years now. Uh, this one was about $90 plus tax. So it's getting close. However, the engineering on this actually improves a lot from that figure and is better. He cleans up much nicer than the Masterpiece and looks good from pretty much all angles. Now, that's not to say it's with its, you know, it's not perfect. There is faults. You know, some of the things don't stay in, like the arm here comes out easily. You got to turn it from here. It's not a big deal, but it's there. Um, I don't know if some of the parts would be yellowing on the cab yet. It is a little off on mine, and I'm not sure what's going on there. Time will tell. Hopefully Hasbro fixed that, which I really hope they did. But if you are an Ultra Magnus fan, I can strongly recommend this. And yeah, he's big, but he's big for a reason. Uh, and I think this is the Ultra Magnus to have in the collection. Uh, that's just my opinion. You don't have to take it. But... I do enjoy this figure, and I will buy this figure if they redo it in Delta Magnus colors. I will buy this thing if they redo it all yellow, clear plastic, which they won't do. I will buy any coloration of this figure. It has a fun transformation, and it's not it's not super hard to do. I mean, I felt the Siege was really annoying to transform, take all the parts off, and have to do, clip it all in. His arms don't really work. It's just, this is clean. This thing's good, and it should be in your collection. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you uh, for watching. I'll see you next review.